Um, thank you. I know you must be all really tired. And there's so much to say, really. I, I don't know where to begin or um, how, how to um, end this. I do want to make a couple of points which I think are important. One, of, one is, um, and of course, particularly, I'm uh, addressing my ex-Muslim colleagues and comrades. Um, you know, I, I think our, our fight uh, and the fight we face today is a fight against Islamism and the religious right. Um, and I think it's important for us to, to recognize that right because Islam as a belief has no meaning in our lives until and unless it has political power. And that's when it affects us because then it is that apostates can be killed and so on and so forth. So in that sense, I think our focus has to be the religious right. Of course, not Muslims. And I want to stress this again. I know we've had this discussion of, well, Muslims believe in Islam and the Quran says apostates should be killed and that's, that means that all Muslims believe that. But I think the reality is that none of us choose our religion. Let's be frank, we're born into it. And we're grown, we're raised in those religions and we often die in those religions without any choice whatsoever. And those labels follow us from the day we're born to the day we die. And, and in a sense, many people who are labeled Muslims, I was a Muslim because my dad was a Muslim, because his, grandf his dad was a Muslim, and on and on and on. And it's because I was born in Iran. If I had been born in France, I would be something else. If I had been brought, born in uh, India, I would have been something else, most likely. And I think we need to recognize this when we, when we look at people's labels, because those labels are very often not of a choice of their own, and that people I, I have great faith in people, and I think people very often go beyond the restrictions of their societies and communities and their national, nationalities and their faith, and they excel and, and very often surprise us, and, and we surprise each other as human beings, because I think people's humanity is so great, and it often goes very, very often goes beyond these labels of Muslim or Christian or um, Iranian and so on and so forth. And so that's why I think, you know, the, the religious right and the Islamists are so brutal, they're so barbaric, they're so inhuman, that we have to represent humanity if we're gonna win. And that means going beyond the labels and seeing people, seeing human beings, irrespective of the labels they give themselves or that are given to them. Um, and so for me, I see many allies among Muslims and many enemies amongst atheists and, uh, you know, because I, I, for me it's not what you believe necessarily personally, because there are many reasons why people choose to still call themselves Muslim or call themselves atheist or what have you. Um, I, uh, and I look at people's politics and where they stand on issues. Will they stand with me? Will they defend the right of apostates not to be killed? Will they defend the right of uh, women not to be discriminated against Sharia law, then they're my allies, and I need them. We're faced with a brutal fascist movement. We need each other if we're going to win. I, don't, I always get so emotional, I'm sorry. <laughs> Gita, you started at this time. <laughs> so uh, what I mean is that we need each other as well, and so it is important to try to see. I understand because I hate Islam with all my being. I hate it. And People who are ex-Muslims hate Islam because you are born into your religion, but we have had to fight to leave it. And we have had to uh, face threats and intimidations and sometimes leave everything that we've known and loved in order to say that we don't want to be Muslim, that we want to be atheist. So that hatred is real. I hate Islam and we are allowed to hate Islam because it's a belief. It's a, it's a, it's a religion of hate. It's a religion that hates women, it hates gay people, it hates animals, it hates children, it hates sex, it hates love, it hates music, like all religions. But it hasn't been reined in like some other religions. And it needs to be reined in, and part of reining that in is stopping that political movement, but also criticizing, being allowed to criticize, being allowed to mock, being allowed to question. Um, so, so I think that there is a difference between saying you're allowed to criticize religion, Islam, you know, it's no longer an opium of the masses, as Marx said, it is people's genocider. 
And, and so, in a sense, it is bad for people's health, it is bad for society, it is bad for your body, mind, and soul. But you have a right to believe it, but because you have a right to believe it, doesn't mean that I have to respect your beliefs. These are lines that, that are clear, but that doesn't mean that Muslims are our enemies, and that's what I want to be clear. Uh, the, the religious right are our enemies. And it's not just the Islamists, they're the Buddhist right, the Hindu right, the Christian right, the Jewish right, on and on and on. They're all the same. They're all the same. But Islamists are the head of that movement. And we know because we fought them for decades. We know this movement well. And we know that we need to build this mass movement to fight them. So I guess my plea here, and I haven't even looked at my notes, but my plea here is that let's target the religious right because they are our enemies. Criticize Islam all you want. Because the more people leave Islam, the, the stronger we are and the weaker they become. And I mean by, by they, I don't mean people's personal religion, but by the, the gatekeepers of power, the religious right, that tell people what to do and tell, tell us all how to live. So criticize Islam, attack Islamism, but remember that many of those in this fight are also Muslims and atheists and none. And many opposing us include atheists, include socialists and leftists, like ourselves, and include, um, you know, women and men, just like, uh, you know, uh, because people are people, and where they stand is important. So I do want to make that plea uh, today, uh, and, and for secularism, because if we are going to be able to live in a better world, as a minimum, I mean, I'm a socialist, it's not an end all, but as a minimum, we do need secular societies. We need religion to be separate from the state. And it is for the benefit of believers and atheists for secularism. And we need each other to get there. So thank you.